Good day. Welcome to the case consulting and training platform. Today is the 2nd of January 2023. It's the first video that I will make for this year. I'm sure you've had a wonderful celebration and we thank God for making it possible for all of us to see this new year. The new year is full with the promises of God and we come to accomplishment as his word says. We've had a tremendous journey, a very good one. A roller coaster, as I can say. A one that we all have learned from each other. But we have to move forward. Moving forward in 2023. But how do we move forward? We have to learn and unlearn. We learn and unlearn. And all this comes with the mind with the mind. The truth about life is the stronghold that the devil has on us is our mind. It's our mind. The Bible tells us that my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. But you see this era it's not a time for us to perish because of lack of knowledge, because knowledge is abundant. Knowledge is everywhere. It's left for us to choose because God has given us a choice and we have to use the choice wisely. I want to talk about a mindset because there must be a shift in our mindset if we want the promise of God to work in our lives. There must be a shift in our mindset if we want progress to come to our lives. 2022 was a time where we had a deep reflection on ourselves. For those who follow the 21 day program on our mind, you see, we had a deep reflection, very deep. And with that reflection, I believe each and every one of you have looked into yourself and tried to think about the direction, the next direction to take. Some are confused whether to stay with their old habits or to develop new ones. Others are afraid of change. They really have the desire to change certain things in their life, certain aspects in their life, certain character traits. But they are afraid of change. Change should not be constant. Change should be something that happens every day in our lives. Because as we live, situations, time, everything, circumstances, they bring new ideas in our lives. And you see those ideas are ideas that comes to build us or to destroy us because some ideas actually come to destroy us that is why it all starts with the mind the devil understands this concept far more better than us and that is why the devil focuses on our brain on our mind you see the bible says in romans 12 verse 2 the new living translation that don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. By changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect which therefore means 
the will of God in your life will always be pleasing, will always be good, and will always be perfect. The problem is, do we actually know the will of God in our lives? Most often it's hard for us to know the will of God in our life. It's hard to know our direction. We find it difficult. But yes, God has given us a choice. He says we should change our mentality, change our thinking. You see, when you change your mindset, you renew your thoughts and the ways that you think. You see, God never intended that we should act according to the way of the world. But God wants us to act according to his way. We should act according to his will. He is the author and the finisher. He, God, is the author and the finisher. And he wants us to act that way. You see, we should build our mind, a mindset of positivity. We should build a mindset of belief. A mindset of belief. Belief in our ability. Believe in our capacity. Believe in ourselves. It's often say, said that charity begins at home. At home, charity begins at home. We use this statement every day. Where is that home? Uh, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in your body because it's a temple. It's a temple. You go to worship in the temple and your body is classified as a temple. Which therefore means you need to worship your body. Because that body, you need to worship it. It's a temple. It's sacred. It's like if you don't take care of the food you eat, you don't take care of your health, sickness will come. And you will die. If you go to the hospital, you have diabetes, you have something, they will tell you, stop, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this, to regulate your system. To make you live long. The mind. What is the food of the mind? The food of the mind is the is, it's God's presence in our life. It's God's words in his Bible. That is the food of our mind. The word of God. It's not only by the reading. But trying to understand. God wants you to have a belief system, to have faith, faith, faith. By believing of things, things, believing the things that you know do not exist, but you believe that in time to come, you have them. You have hope that though this thing is not happening now, but it is coming. When you have that belief system, you walk towards it. You build your mind towards that. Most of us fail because we lack belief. We do not trust in ourselves and we do not trust in our ability. Sometimes we do trust, but we have people around us that makes us to doubt our ability. Nobody is perfect. You make a mistake and you correct that mistake. But sometimes when you make a mistake and those who are around you, they make you to feel that you've done the worst thing in your life. You feel discouraged and you abandon it. There's a story that I read that a man, he had a very big field and he knew that Gold is around that area. He started digging. He dug for a very long time. He took years to dig. He was trying every day. The neighbors and everybody, they were having gold 
and just close to the set. There's no reason why he's not supposed to have this goal. But you see, what was the mindset? At one point in time, people came and discouraged him. Look at your neighbor, he has look at his if it was if there was gold, there would be. But that man was a geologist. He has learned to understand the terrain of that particular area. And he knew that this is this particular belt from this area to this area is the same line. If there is gold there, there should be gold here. He knew from his studies and everything that there is gold. But because he tried. And people around him, even the wife, told him that you have been doing these things for years. You have put in a lot of money on this thing and there is nothing. Just leave this place and let's go. Around him, there was no positive energy anymore. Nobody to say please to this. His belief system collapsed. Our mindset goes with our belief system. And we need people around us to support us in our belief system. You might have a vision, but you don't have somebody to support that vision. That vision will be dormant. And you will never do anything with that, and you will die without vision. That is why I made a video the other day. I talked about graveyard. That, you see, millions of people have died. Died with visions. That might have changed the world. There were things that have changed the world, but they did not have people around them. To give them that positive vibe. They might at one point believe in themselves and believe in their ability. But when they, they try, they try, they try. Sometimes you are discouraged. Sometimes you need only a push. But most often we discourage people. That's why you need to be surrounded by those who think positive. In 2023, we need to start by thinking positive. The power of positive thinking. We must think positive. We must surround ourselves with those who can give up that necessary drive, that necessary energy. Who can encourage us and tell us that the fact that you failed mm -mm, is not the end of the world. It's just the beginning. That there is something ahead. That you have a special quality that you, like that, will succeed. We need this push. A child, you see a child in school, and when the child comes back, the child failed. They say, no, daddy, fuck, you failed, but you tried. You tried. But I know that you have the ability to pass. I know that you are very intelligent, but you were a little bit distracted. But you see, this time around, my boy, there's no distraction. This time you beat them because you are my hero. Now, the child has failed. The child knows that you kill him, you scold him, but what do you do? You talk intelligently. You build his confidence. In the means of failure, he's seen himself to succeed the next time. Now you've given him the necessary drive, the necessary energy to move on. And next time we'll go say, no, you will remember the words that I know you are my boy. You are, not, you are very, you're very intelligent. You can do this thing. That destruction, it was just a side destruction. Don't worry. Next, next time, you'll be the best in that class. He goes there with that thought. Every focus will be on that direction. Let me tell you something. That child will come out with the best result ever. Because sometimes we need encouragement. We are still children. You might be a parent today, but forget. Don't forget. That you, you have a father, you have a mother. Oh, God is our father. So, we need encouragement. We need to encourage one another. We should have a belief system that is strong. Now, you believe in the power of Christ. You believe in God, but you've not seen God. But you believe that God exists. The devil only controls our mind by telling us that where is that God that you're talking about? Has God come to you? Now that you are suffering, now that I don't really have money, can God come and give me money? The devil will make you to think now. 
and you forget to think tomorrow. You forget the bigger picture. You are only looking about, you are only looking at your situation. I'm poor now. I'm poor now. I've had this accident. I've had this one. I've had this one. How would I continue? The devil wants you to see your limitations. It's only through your limitations that the devil wants you to see yourself. But look, I always say, where there is tunnel, there's always a light at the end. Tunnels are always dark. When you go towards the end, because the tunnel must stop, there will be light. So that darkness might move in for kilometers, but there will be light. There will be light. And God has grace. God has mercy. And he has the ability to give us. He said, I will bless who I want to bless. And I curse who I want to curse. But look at your mindset. Now, I want us to look at the story of the boy who was possessed by a demon in the Bible. That one is in, in Mark nine mark nine and it runs from 14 or so it runs go down but let's just try to focus on that part there is something there there's something in that story that i want us to focus on i want us to have something to do with it because it's important. Very important in the story. Now, remember, there was this man, this young guy, that was possessed. He had a demonic force that blocks him from talking. It blocks him from talking. So it was a very serious thing. So people were gathered around. Each time the boy wants to talk, that force will knock him down as if that person has epilepsy, as if the boy has epilepsy. Now, in that Romans 9.21, Jesus saw the crowd. It was like the guy had convulsion. Each time that the world, that's what happened. You see? Now, when Jesus saw them in verse 19, Jesus said to them, How long must I be with you? Bring the boy. So Jesus just asked them to bring the boy. 19 tells us to bring that Jesus wants the boy. Now, 20, verse 20 tells us that they brought the boy. And when the evil spirit saw Jesus, he threw the child into a violent convulsion, just like he always does. And he fell to the ground. And foam was fuming. Foam started coming out of the mouth. If you witness somebody has epilepsy, it is almost like that. And Jesus turned and asked them, and asked the father for how long the boy has been in this particular way. And the father replied that since the guy was little, that the epilepsy, the spirit of that epilepsy has been since when the boy was very young. And he said that often the spirit has often thrown the guy in the water, thrown the guy on fire, and things like that. In fact, the spirit wants to kill the guy. But they made a statement. They said, have mercy on us and help us if you can. <laughs> I was coming to that verse in 22. The father cried to Jesus. And the last part of the verse says, Have mercy on us and help us if you can. They already knew who Jesus was. They knew that Jesus heals people. Yes, the uh, apostles, his disciples, they could not heal that guy. They tried, they could not. As we will see. But when the boy came, you see, he saw Jesus say, if you could. He said, if you can, because many people have tried. From when that guy was young till now, but that guy is in the same direction. 
Now, 23, look at what God, Jesus said. Jesus said, if I can, Jesus asked, anything is possible if a person believes. Now, you are already asking me if you can. It means you do not even believe because that if you can, it means there is doubt. So Jesus is telling the man that you do not even believe. Now the man said, what do you mean? Jesus asked, what do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. He asked. You said if I can. Jesus asked them, what do you mean? He said, anything is possible if you believe. I have come today to make you to understand that all it takes is for you to believe. Believe. Believe in your ability. First, believe in God and believe in your ability. And believe that God will make it happen. Believe that God will make it happen for you. Have it strong in you and every single thing. Focus your effort on the task that you want to accomplish. And you see, there will be a way. Now, the father did something. The father in 24, the father, 24, the father said, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. The fact that he said that to Jesus, that if you can, the father already knew that it means he do not actually truly believe or his belief was not so strong. He was in doubt. And that is why when we go to church and we pray to God, we expect things to happen. But when it doesn't happen at the starting point that we want, we have doubts. And that doubt, it, makes our, it changes our mindset. That is why if somebody will come to you and give you, a, 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 a let me say, a native doctor, or which doctor, how do you put it? I will come to you and talk to you because you have that part of your life that there's an unbelief system in you or there's an iota unbelief in you. What happens? We say, okay, since God has not done this, but let me just try this. So your attention has been divided. The Bible warns us about indecision. That indecision is a bad thing. So at that point, because you do not believe, your attention is divided. You are not focused again on one thing. But God wants us to focus on focus on him. He should be our main focus. And believe that he will make it right. Now the man said, I do believe. But help me overcome my unbelief. So the man has recognized the fact that he, at least he had a belief system in him. But still, with that belief system, there was, a, there was a part that doubted. And so, he owned up to the fact that, please, help me overcome my unbelief. Remember, he said, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. He believed something in him tells him that Jesus, Christ, we do, we heal that child. But again, something, another thing tells him that mm -mm, he will not. So when Jesus talked to them, said that not everything is possible, immediately recognized his fault and said, no, I did not focus on Christ. I also I focused on Christ, but I was looking also something along the side. But God wants us to focus on him, not anything by the side. So, with that, what did Jesus do? Jesus immediately healed the guy. He healed the guy. But when he healed the guy and that spirit, evil spirit knocked the guy down, those around, they, they thought that instead, the man has died. But when Jesus held the arms of the man and he comes, that is when they discover that the man is alive. Sometimes you will take decisions in life. Even those around you will believe that you failed. And when they know that you failed, they will run away. Those that stood there and they thought that this thing could work, when they discover that guy has failed, 
and they knew that hey this might be dead because the guy did not shake the bible tells us the guy did not the guy just fell down and he did not respond they were afraid they knew he's dead immediately they start running some of them they ran they say ah that man has died but jesus knew and he had the belief that god has saved him jesus took the man's arm hooked the man up who is that person in your life that when you fall that person will still come and say give me your hand let me raise you up do you have that individual have you reflect i told us to reflect have you had that reflection do you find one person that can hold your arm and tell you that oh though you are done stand up when you have that person don't let go of that person never you let go of that person because that is the only person that would think good of you that is the only person that wants you to survive that is why Jesus is the one that took the hand because Jesus is light. Christ is light. God will come at the last hour when you feel there's nothing. God will come and he will do something in your life. We need to have this belief system. We are all like this father of the, the young man. That though you believe, you believe in God, but still there is something around that you want to go around it because you are waiting. We are not patient enough to wait for the for the time of for God's time. We are not patient. All of us have this problem. I have that problem. You have that problem. Many of us have that problem. We are not patient enough to wait. When a small challenge comes, we feel that's the end of uh, end of time. At the end of the day, just like the man with the gold. That man left that field because many people, including their wife, told the man that, hey, let's abandon this thing, it's too much. The resources and everything has gone to this business and it's not working anymore. You don't have to go. The man left and sold the land for a meager sum, for, for a small sum, and left. As soon as the man left, it did not take two days. The new owner, the new owner also saw the terrain and said, no way, I bought this place because there's gold in this place. Those ones that have seen theirs up, this man has left this thing. I will go to the end until every soil is out of this hole. Until I see water, I will not stop. The man did not even go two more feet. And he did not only see gold. He saw the biggest diamond that he has ever seen. The man could not believe. Every area, every place in that area had gold. But that particular man had a diamond. A rare diamond. Rare one. That man became a billionaire instantly. The effort that the other man made for two years went in vain. Because at one point in time, he did not have that belief to continue. We should change our mindset. We should change our mindset. You see, but 28 and verse 29 of, of, of this Mark 9, uh, 20, Mark 9, tells us something and I want us to look at it. Now, after Jesus has made everything possible and that guy was fine, Jesus went at home, was with the disciples. And they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Remember, Everybody tried to cast out that evil spirit, including the disciples, but they could not succeed. So they were baffled. We are your disciples. We have given up. We have abilities too. Why is it that it was difficult for us to do this? But look at the reply. Jesus said, He said, This kind. That's the kind of evil spirit. 
can only be cast out by prayers. There are things in life that we are looking for. I remember Mama Helen Kwashi. We are so rest in peace. Many times when my mother was sick and fell in a diabetic coma, she would come. I was young, small. She would pray, pray. My mother would come back to life. Mama, I remember you now. God bless you. Your soul, rest in peace. I remember her because there's this song. Every time she gets up in the morning, she always sing. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. You see, that song, most of us know this song. Jesus replied to them, you did not cast this demon away. Because that demon can only be casted away by prayers. Most of the things we need are found in that small key that Jesus gave here today. Most of your deliverance that you need, it's close to you. So this, the book of God, it's everything that we need. It's everything that we need. Everything. To have a spiritual mindset, you must be led by the Holy Spirit instead of, a world, of, of, of the earthly life. You must be led with the Holy Spirit. You see, God's words in Psalm 51, the Psalm, when David spoke to God after committing terrible sins, murder, adultery, and what have you, he came to God and he pleaded with God. Verse 9 says, Don't keep looking at my sin. Remove the stain of my guilt. Sometimes we fail because of guilt. We fail because of guilt. Because we are guilty of something. And it stops us from advancing. Be open to talk. Be open to express yourself, how you feel. If you hurt somebody, be open to talk about it. Be open to ask for forgiveness. Be open to admit a fault. For it wipes away your guilt. And as soon as that guilt is taken away, your mindset changes. It resets your brain in a different dimension. Positivity returns. Positivity comes instantly. Instantly. Verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. When that guilt is taken away, your mind becomes empty and open and focused. And your spirit will be instantly renewed. Your way of analyzing, your way of doing things will change instantly. Our mindset 
I want us to take 2023 with a different mindset. We have to believe in the commandment of Christ. Because he summed all the commandments of Moses into two commandments. One, love God with our heart, our soul, and everything. The second, love our neighbors as ourselves. Treat them how you want others to treat you. Be good to others. Take care of others. Show love to others. With this mindset of love, with this mindset of sacrifice, with this mindset of giving to your brothers and sisters, there's only one thing that will come your way. It's success and breakthrough in every dimension of your life. It might not be easy, but I want us to try it. Try this pattern. Prior to 2023, you've done it in another way. But see 2023, try another way. Try another way. You've had divided minds. You've been focusing on God, focusing on other things. Your mind was dancing in the middle. One part told me, We were talking and he said, Life doesn't have the middle part. Life has two opposite sides. That is why you have right and wrong. You have yes and no. Those were his words. I said, Pa, what do you mean by this? He said, If you want to follow God, follow God. With all your heart, with all your soul, everything about you should be focused in God. And you will succeed. So if you want to follow Ngambe, those are your words in code. Ngambe is, I don't know how I can put it. All these other powers that you believe in. I don't know the power that you believe in. I don't know what you believe in. Any other power that you believe in. If you want to focus on that, focus on that 100%. And you will succeed. I said, Pa, what are you talking about? It's not evil. If you want to be evil, be evil. But you cannot be evil and good. You cannot have God and you have Satan. You cannot have God and you, you cannot blend yes and no. Yes is yes. There's no middle. And he said, you see me? I don't believe in your God, my son. I believe in my medicines. The things that I do. And it has worked for me throughout my whole life. I've never had any problem. But I believe in, in this thing 100%. He said, you see, you love God, believe in God, focus on God. And you see that God, if you focus on him and believe in him, you have everything that you want. But I have choose my side. Now, I want you listening to me now. Which side have you decided to choose? Are you like this father that came and said, I believe. And the next me tells Jesus that, please, help me. Help me for my own belief. Are you the one in the middle? God wants us to focus on him from now. God said we should try him in 2023. And you will testify. Try him in 2023. Focus on him. Focus and do the things that he wants you to do. 
Love yourself. Love your neighbors. Give. Sacrifice for others. Do the things that God wants you to do. Take care of the widows. Take care of the orphans. Take care of those that are downtrodden. In his name, do the right things. Do not tell lies. Say the truth and only bear the truth. Focus on him. This 2023. And God says, your mindset will be renewed and you will see greater things. Greater things. I will be amazed with his promise in 2023. It's the year of promise. We shall talk about your testimony this same time next year and your life will not be the same again. I'm sorry that this video has taken a little bit long. But it's something I do not plan to talk about. I just came here today as a spirit leads. I know I've been, I've gone much spiritual in this. But that is how I was led today. I want you to understand that you have the power. To transform things. Remember that when God created you, he created you in his own image and he gave you dominion over all principalities. So you were made in the image of God and God gave you dominion over everything from the beds of the sea to everything. You named everything. They were under you. So they cannot be, they cannot, you cannot, they, can, they cannot be against you. If only you know yourself, you believe in yourself, believe in that God that gave you that authority and stand with that authority and the promise of God and the promise he made to our father Abraham that the promise to, to prosper us, prosper us, that his promise to us to prosperity. Prosperity. And when he made us, he said, go and be prosperous. Rule the world, subdue the earth, and be prosperous. That is his promise to us. He wants us to remember that promise. That we should focus on him. All our efforts, everything, our heart, mind, heart, everything. That is time. Focus. And you will testify. May God bless us all. Happy 2023. Shalom.